The RV Show USA. Last week we had a caller that said that he had purchased a brand new Class C Freedom Elite from Camping World, and he sounded like one unhappy camper. Unfortunately, his situation is not unique, and I think that you can learn, we can all learn, actually, a lot from it. To tell us about his RV nightmare, let's go up to Massachusetts and bring up Tom. So, Tom, tell us why you bought what you did and why you bought it at Camping World, please. Well, um, we believed in Camping World through all their advertising that they did at the NASCAR Cup Series and such, um, and we bought this camper to, to travel um obviously um across the world or whatever we you know um, we like to go to certain events that it's just a lot easier to have an rv than to have a tow behind um it has all the amenities of a home and you can come and go as you please basically um and, so, so you bought you know, it for a for a just pleasure not to live in full time but just to use maybe take the grandkids out and have fun the ultimate goal was to do about five to 6,000 miles a year. That was the goal. And um, what we found out is every single time we went somewhere, another thing broke. And it got to the point where it just wasn't fun anymore. I, I, uh, I, I, I'm laughing. I, I'm not laughing at you. It's just I'm laughing. It's just I hear this story so often. How, how did they treat you when you bought the RV at Camping World? Um, the you know, there was actually no pressure from the salesman. We arrived on a Saturday morning. Um, we were on the lot for several hours. Um, the salesman was absolutely fantastic to work with. Uh, he got us approved for finance and all, and all uh, on the spot. And we arranged to pick up the unit about four or five days later. Um and then about not even a couple of days later, we had gone in to purchase some other things. We had won some uh, crazy money on the spin to win thing, mm. and we wanted to meet with our salesman and just tell him about our, you know, how happy we were. And he was not, already not there; he wasn't with the company anymore. So that was kind of a bummer. So, uh, so, so uh, we only have these two segments. You got a, we got a lot to cover. When did you figure yeah. out, Tom, that something wasn't right with the Class C that they sold you? Um, it was it, when we first originally picked it up. It wasn't leaning, or it wasn't quite noticeable. Um, but it, was, it almost took other people to tell us or to point it out. It's almost like we didn't want to believe it because of the huge expense we put out for this thing. And then, uh, you know, as more and more things progressed, um, you know, it was time to bring it to the dealer because everything else had basically failed. And and then at one point we had taken it to get an inspection sticker, and the inspection sticker uh, technician was the one that pointed it out. And in, in, in Massachusetts, they offer you basically, you know, we can put a rejection on it or we can send you on your way. Um, you know, if you get a rejection sticker, basically you have to park it. So he knew that it was under warranty. He gave it the original inspection sticker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's basically, you know, how I got it to Camping World. But... I thought that you had told me in an email that they would not inspect it. You took it to get it, a new inspection he, he, on it, and they and they declined the inspection because he said something was wrong with it. That's exactly true, yes. He, he said that something was wrong with it. I'm not going to pass this. However, I had the right at that point to take to take it to a you know camping world or another location to have it inspected. Gotcha. Because he, he automatically told me, I'm not going to pass that. There's something wrong with it. Okay. Because at that point, it had almost a three-inch lean in its parking lot. So if, if I'm looking at the back side of your Freedom Elite, uh, they look beautiful, by the way. I mean, they look nice. It's a beautiful. It wants to be beautiful. But if I, if I look at the, the, the thing from the, either the front or the back, it leans to the driver's side substantially, I guess. Yes? Yes. Yes. In, in fact, actually, so much so that the pictures that you sent us, you actually stuck your hand in the wheel well on on different side sides. I'm not sure if we're able to pull that up on the on the uh, live stream here to show video uh, pictures of it, but it is a substantial lean to this vehicle. And so you took it back to Camping World, you brought it to their attention. 
What happened? Um, a lot of arguing with the uh, four or five different people I spoke with. Um, they didn't want to touch it. Um, they didn't have the capability of it. Um, I basically had to deal with Thor directly. Um, they didn't want to repair anything of any of the other little objects I had uh, broken. Did they not and see it was finally, leaning? I had to get... What's that? Did they not see it was leaning substantially, like you said, and to the left and uh, you know to the driver's side, and you couldn't get it inspected? Did they not hear you? Did you not tell them? Or it, it, it's it's like they don't hear you. They they don't want to do anything for you after you make the sale. I I couldn't even believe that the amount of money I put out and they give you nothing back. Uh, it, it's it's so disappointing. Um, so Thor and, and manufactured finally, the coach. As I understand, a, the, a Freedom Elite, it's actually got a Ford chassis underneath it. And, and then Thor uh, buys these chassis, and they put the, the uh, RV on top of it. They build the RV on top of the Ford chassis. So it's a Thor product. Yes. It's a, it's a Ford chassis with a Thor. They build the, the coach, just like you said. And in this situation, I feel that it was just simply too much weight put on the Ford chassis because the Ford dealer that we took it to to prove all these weight uh, issues basically stated that there was no visible defects um, other than, you know, there's just not enough room left for any other items other than what they put on the chassis. That you, you maxed out of the gross vehicle weight is just simply maxed out. What does it handle you know, like, Tom, when you when you drive it? Can you feel – do you feel comfortable and safe when you're driving it, or what, what's it feel like? You know, at first, again, I've never really driven a box-type vehicle, but it's kind of white knuckle in a lot of cases. Um, if you're going 65, 70 miles an hour down the road and the wind grabs it, um, you know, it, it feels – the more I got to drive it, it feels like an overloaded vehicle. It's just, you know – you. It's it's luggish. Um, it's you know it's it's five hundred pounds heavier on the left side. We have proof in the paperwork here. So you you um, actually it, you know, you, uh, you did your homework. You it looks like you've done it. You sent me a whole lot of documentation. You actually took the vehicle to a, a, a scale to be certified, and from the numbers on that ticket on the certification ticket. It looks like, it, you know, if, if you, for example, if you had a 1,000-pound vehicle, you had four tires, you want 250 pounds on each tire. That's the ultimate what Correct. you'd like. But it's not even close to equally distributed it's, on your RV. It's 600. It was 600, I think, 600 pounds over what Thor claims it was when it left the factory. And when we weighed it, it was basically empty. It had no water in it because in Massachusetts it's winter, so it was winterized prior to dropping it off. Um, it's just it's it's just crooked. I, I can't explain it. I, I, it's sad. So uh, so has Camping World and Thor just said, "Hey, too bad, so sad. That's the way it is. Deal with it." Or are they trying to work with you? Or what? Tell me, have they been easy to work with? Tell me some of that. Thor is the worst company I've ever dealt with in my life. They're not easy to work with. Um, they're somewhat polite on the telephone, um, but the four or five people that I've spoken to all have different answers. I've been muted on many conversations because I think that um, they realize that they're going against each other when they tell you what you can and cannot do. We have Tom on the line from Massachusetts who's sharing his RV horror story about buying a motorhome from Camping World that sounds to me like it is a great example of selling something to I don't know, the unsuspecting buyer that looks good but may be way too heavy for the chassis it's built on. So after dealing with this problem for so long, Tom, are you getting closer to any kind of a resolution? Where are you at? Yeah, um, other than Thor wants to rescale the unit, and they have scheduled to do that on April 2nd, uh, and we're going to kind of go from there. Um, we you know, there's nothing's been added to this vehicle since I purchased it or by Camping World that I know of. Uh, it's it's the way it was delivered, and it's you know it's proven to be from a Ford dealer about 600 pounds heavier than what they had claimed. What they claimed um, it was was when you bought it. Now, and and I understand in, in the months and months that you've been trying to get some kind of solution to this problem, 
you've bumped into people that are either employees or ex-employees of Thor that have told you some scary stuff. You want to share any of those stories? If I'm allowed to, I've had uh, several people reach out to me privately, and one of them was a former employee, and she told me that there had been several instances of they had to call the police. They were held against their will. They had worked over 20 hours. Um, you know what? Hang on. Hang on, Tom. You know what? I probably shouldn't have asked that. Let, let's don't go down that road. That's a, okay, I, okay. I, I don't want to do it. Let, let, let's just stick to, let's just stick to, uh, to the RV and what we're dealing with with you. So uh, when we spoke a few days ago, I learned that you are very sensitive to these gross vehicle weight ratings much more so than the average person is. Why is that? How do you know so much about it? Well, I have several other commercial vehicles, and I'm, I'm registered with the Department of Transportation. I have DOT numbers, and I do annual uh, updates. Uh, they constantly are updating you. Um, to, you know, it's a real difficult, being a small businessman, it, it's difficult. They, you know, you can't have overloaded vehicles. It's simply against the law. Uh, I've paid overweight fees in the past. Um, you know, I, I just wish that the the government or something could step in. You know, when I've been told that when these four units are weighed, there's nobody from the state of Virginia there. Um, so they're they're kind of on their own. And I was also told that these units are scaled at two, three in the morning. Um, so I feel like. It, it, it's it's wrong, obviously. Uh, no matter what they tell me, the, the vehicle is way heavy on one side, and it's just I can't safely carry my family, four passenger vehicle, with any luggage of any kind and not be exceeding the 12,500 gross vehicle weight of the vehicle. You know, when it's playing devil's advocate, you know, somebody would say, well, just, you know, be a big boy and just use it. I mean, just, but you know, you bought it, just take care of it, deal with it. But, but listening to you, if, if you, again, I'm not a lawyer, but if you happen to be in an accident and you were overweight, I would think that you'd be totally exposed to that deal and at no fault of your own because you bought something that was overweight to begin with. That is correct. I would be held responsible 100%. Um, forget what I was getting at there. What about your state attorney general's office? Have you contacted them? Have you written a letter to anybody? I have written a letter to them, and, and honestly, we've gotten nowhere because they sent me a letter saying that they were trying to reach me, and yet I don't recall ever being reached. And then I called them back, and, and I still haven't gotten a phone call back. And that was the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and it was Margarita DePaul, actually. That's who was handling the case, but we... It's like nobody wants to do anything to help you. Well, it sounds like Thor is at least acknowledging there may be a problem. They're coming out to check it out and weigh it. I, I you know, I, I wish you the best on that. But I, I got to tell you, 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 it looks like to me you've documented a lot of things. What do you want? I mean, what does Tom want for a, a resolution to this thing? I want the world to know that Thor rips people off. I want the world to know that. This is a, probably a more common problem than what I've discovered. Um, I want a full refund, I feel. This vehicle has 7,000 miles on it. It's not been anywhere. It doesn't have 70,000 miles. Um, you know, if they don't want to give me a full refund, they're going to hear about me for a long time. What, what, um, there's what, no real fix for this. How has this impacted your life, Tom? Because it sounds like to me you took it to get inspected. They turned you down at the state inspection station. So even if Thor comes out and says, oh, everything's fine, if you can't get your vehicle inspected, it's not legal to drive. And so you're breaking the law there. You can't use it for what you wanted to use it for. Am I off the target? correct. No, nope, you're absolutely correct. I mean, it's not what we intended on. Um, you know, just beyond this issue, all the little things that happened, I mean, it's just they didn't give you the right time of day after you make the purchase. Um, they basically denied every request I had for any type of thing. It took a lot of screaming and yelling to get them to do anything with Thor and with Camping World. 
and I feel like I finally met somebody at Camping World that has helped step up to the plate and help me out with this matter, and they've discovered the fact that this thing is built way too heavy. And now I'm kind of waiting on Thor to see where that goes. I don't know, you know, what if I, I can't see how the government has allowed this even to happen. You know, what, they're not being watched. Well, I, I, I can only f- try to imagine the pain that you're in and the the uh, your dreams of being able to RV have turned into a nightmare of not being able to use it. How how has it impacted your plans? Maybe with you and your wife and family and and traveling this summer. We simply don't want to use it anymore. It's 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 broken every time we've used it, and now you come to the fact that it's just simply overweight. Um, I don't I don't feel safe. I shouldn't put my family in it. Uh, I'm breaking the law by driving it. I do know that, uh, especially with uh, four passengers, because that basically puts us over the gross vehicle weight. Um, so we don't really, you know, I, I don't know if it's worth anything in trade anymore. I mean, it's only a year old, but. You know, maybe maybe talking to you and having this go public is a bad thing, but um, I I feel like I'm entitled to my money back. You know, I'm any, I'm not trying to blow the whistle on anybody, but I am trying to let people know that bad things happen to good people. That you you didn't deserve this. What if you had it to do all over again? Would you even seen this come? I mean, I know you you sent a list of twenty some odd things were broken, but that sounds like the weight issue is the biggest one. What would you have done differently if you had it to do over again? I don't know if I'd do anything differently. I, I put my trust in into Camping World, and I didn't really know who Thor even was. You know, I put my tr- I, I trusted the dealer had told me that. Well, the Thor is a little less, um, the Freedom Elite is a little less money than the Jayco, but we loved it. It was, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful camper, but it, it, it's not capable of doing what it's supposed to do. It's, it's failed in every aspect every time we've taken it somewhere. You know that uh, F four fifty, the chassis. Uh, if Thor would have per- paid twelve hundred, maybe fifteen hundred dollars more. For that heavy chassis that's capable of handling carrying more weight, we wouldn't be talking. You'd be out there RVing, and life would be good. But I guess it's a way that corporations are able to cut corners and and take advantage. So I can't tell you how sorry I am to hear about your nightmare. I just hope that our listeners can learn from these kind of stories, and that more dealers and manufacturers will hear that the natives are getting rest. rest. Hi, this is Goose from the RV Show USA, and these are today's winners. To ensure you get your $50 gift card, make sure you send an email to info at thervshowusa.com. And if you would like to enter to win a $50 gift card of your very own, head over to thervshowusa.com and sign up for our email list. And if you like this video and would like to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It's right over there and turn on the notifications so you will be notified whenever a new video comes out for the RV Show USA. And as always, thank you for watching.